Now, the first thing I want to say is, guys, I am rich by my own definition in the sense that I make enough money to cover all of my expenses every single month. But my expenses every single month are about $1,200. And passively, I'm able to actually cover all of my expenses. And by the way, I live here in Dominican Republic. So to me, that is wealth. To me, wealth is not, for example, having $10 million in the bank that took me 20, 30 years to actually get. And now I'm like 50 years older. And then I'm just like, well, well what do I do now? Okay, that, that's never been my goal per se. But this whole video is I'm going to tell you about the things that I sold in order to actually get wealthy in the way I'm actually telling you guys. Okay. And by the way, there are things that are very easy to sell. If you told me, Tommy, um, why don't you sell your brush? I wouldn't really think about it, okay? I just sell it, not a big deal, okay? Tommy, why don't you sell, for example, that pen? Not a really big deal, but there are certain things that we have that we are just not willing to actually sell. If you tell me, Tommy, why don't you sell your phone? Wait, hold up. Tommy, why don't you sell your TV? Wait, hold up. Why don't you sell your clothes? Wait, 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 right? Everything is just a lot more different because we have a lot of things that are very personal to us and we really have to understand that when you choose to sell something, you're saying the money is worth more than that. And when you also say this money is worth more than this thing, you're also saying at the same time, my time is worth more than this thing. Cause you need to spend time to make money to buy stuff, right? For the most part, right? But if you're saying I'm willing to sell this stuff to get money, to get my time back, you're saying, hey, my time is worth more than all that garbage, all right? That's the whole idea. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you guys those things that I was basically forced into selling to become the person I am today. I don't think I could be who I am today if I did not sell those things. But I said I was actually forced into it. Now, do me a favor and smash the like button. Now, by the way, there's a great story in the Bible, a great, not really story, it's actually an event that actually took place. And it's actually in John 3, if I'm not mistaken. It's when Jesus meets with Nicodemus, I think his name is. And they basically are talking about, Nicodemus asks Jesus, hey, how do I get into heaven? How do I get into the kingdom, all right? And Jesus says, to get into the kingdom, you basically have to be born again. You have to change everything, all right? God has to basically change you completely. You're going to be born again. Only God can actually do that. And when it comes to becoming rich and wealthy, I'm not trying to say it's like the same thing. It's not what I'm saying. It's very different. God does that. But this is something you're actually able to do for the most part. Of course, God has control over that too. But the whole point is, all right, the whole point is in order to become wealthy, in order to become rich, you have to basically change at the core. You have to become a new person because being broke is not just a condition of I don't have money it's also a mental condition it's also the way you think it's also the things you care about who you hang around with how you spend your time all these things it's not just a bank account it's not like hey you're broke I give you a million dollars you're rich no in a few weeks <laughs> in a few months or a year or two you're gonna be back to being broke because being broke is not just a number is actually a condition. That's what I actually mean, all right? So here are the things I actually had to go out there and sell. First, you gotta understand, you cannot defend who you are. You are who you are partially because of you, obviously, but for the most part, the reason you think the way you think is basically because of all the things you've been influenced, okay? You know, Tommy, I am who I am. I can't just be riding around in like an old car. I wanna be fancy. I am who I am. I can't be hanging around with with, with, with with those folks. Or for example, I got I always gotta be, for example, with the fresh fade. And for example, I gotta have the nicest shoes out. I am who I am. Alright? That's very stupid. Here's why. Because when you were like 10 years old or seven years old, you weren't that. But as you keep growing and society keeps influencing you, you become that, all right? So you have to change those things about yourself. And if all you do is defend yourself, then most likely you're going to stay the same. So the very first thing I had to sell were the things I had to do with my identity. And for me at the time, those things were my clothes and my sneakers. I thought these things were, for the most part, almost like a part of me. When I used to dress for, I had 23 pairs of sneakers some of them were costing like 100 200 maybe even $300, and I had them. And to me, there just wasn't shoes. They actually said something about me. They said, hey, isn't Tommy cool? Isn't he like a cool guy? This guy is amazing. Look how he dresses, right? All those things had a deep meaning to me. So 
me choosing to actually sell that, it was like, I'm selling a part of me. And I was like, you know, years later, you're like, yo, Tommy, this is sneakers, right? Now, I'm like, hey, those are just sneakers. Like, what's the big deal? But then, when I was actually living in that, I was like, no, this is this is like a part of me. These are my shoes. I, I spent money on this. Like, this means something. When they look at me with this, like, what are they going to say when they see me with no Jordans and they see me with, like, some, some weird Marshall shoes, right? But now it's just like, whatever. But the point is, you have to make that choice. Are material things that you use for status worth more than your time, worth more than you eventually being able to make passive income and not having to work? Is that worth more to you than your future in a sense? That, that's the whole idea. And to me, it wasn't. So here's a question. And every single time in this video, I'm gonna ask you guys questions and I want you to answer them. Whether you answer them in the comments, it's up to you, don't really care. But I want you to actually answer them in your head and be honest, all right? And here's the first question. What are the things you actually identify with that are costing you money? Specifically, material things. For a lot of guys, it's cars, shoes, clothes. Um, it also may be where you go, right? I go to this fancy gym, right? Fancy guy and so on, right? What are those things? Make a list, cut them out, all right? That's my recommendation. Now, number two is going to be value your future more than current gratification. I don't mean, for example, like 30 years into the future or like 20 years into the future. I mean, there are things you can do right now that can change your life within the next like five to 10 years. So when you think about instant gratification, for example, no, I'm gonna do this now because I want it now. No, like don't do that, all right? There are people out there who say, I want this car. I can't afford it. I'm still gonna buy it though with debt. So that way I can get what I want. But the truth is, if you're valuing yourself for the future, you're not gonna be worried about, for example, current gratification. So for me, believe it or not, and a lot of people have problems with selling these things, I started selling things that consumed my time. I call them time suckers, all right? So you gotta value your time more than instant gratification. And for me at the time, that was my PlayStation 4. I had logged in more than 2,000 hours, I think it was, on Call of Duty, maybe more, okay? That's a lot of time, that's a lot of time. And I was just like, what am I doing on this device, all right? And I'm basically, I have another prestige. Prestige is like when you go from one level to the next level, whatever, I have another, like another thing, and it's like, yo, none of this stuff is real. This stuff takes up my time. And I know some guys and some people out there are like, no, Tommy, but I like doing it. It's like a de-stressor. The answer is when you're broke, you can't be affording to spend like three hours or four hours in a video game, man. It's a garbage way to spend your time. Your time is very valuable. And by the way, today, I have a Nintendo Switch and I play some games, okay? One game I'm playing right now is called Hades. I really like it. But for the most part, when I play these games, I'm playing them on purpose. I love playing chess. I have a chess board back there, right? But when I'm playing these games, I'm playing them on purpose, right? I'm not spending four or five hours on these things. No, not usually. Sometimes I go like through one of those phases, but for the most part, I'm not. Maybe like 30 an hour. But when I'm working, I'm working, and I'm not trying to basically be somewhere else by playing a video game or whatever. So I sold my PlayStation, not for the money only, but for the time it actually liberated me, all right? So one question to watch yourself is, what are you spending your time on? And what are those things that you can actually sell to save you time? For a lot of folks, it could be, hey, don't even have a TV at home, yo. Or for example, get a phone that's a lot dumber, right? I have an iPhone SE. Every single time I open this phone, it gives me a problem with the screen and I can't click what I wanna click. You know what it makes me wanna do? Not use it. I spend a lot less time on this phone than I did, for example, on my iPhone 14 Pro Max, right? So that helps me out a lot. Now, the third thing that I basically had to get rid of, sell, right, is going to be, I stopped making excuses for my life, right? That's a big thing. When you make excuses for your life, you're like, the reason things are like this is because of my job, this is because of my environment, it's because of my mom, my dad, my girlfriend, my wife, my husband, whatever it is, right? Um, you're, you have no control over your life, and it's just like, it's a lazy way, distasteful way, to not take responsibility for who you actually are and what you're actually going through. So a big thing that I basically do is, 
if I am where I am, I'm like, what can I do to change this? I don't make excuses for my life because if I do, I'm going to stay exactly living the life I'm basically living. All right. So here's what I sold. I sold my loyalty for my benefit. Now, this kind of sounds like, Tommy, it sounds like you're a traitor selling your loyalty. Why would you do that? Got to be loyal till the end. The truth is, I noticed I was being loyal to people, to companies, to just overall I was putting my loyalty in places where it wasn't really deserved. So for me personally, that was, hey, I was basically working a job making 13 bucks an hour where they refused to give me a raise for like 40 hours a week. And what am I doing here? Where I can basically go out there, start a business or get a better job and make more money. Why am I being loyal? Because these people gave me a job or what? why is it exactly, right? And if things get hard, things get tough, they're going to fire me. They do that all the time, right? So I stopped giving my loyalty to companies and corporations. If it don't make sense financially, for example, I'm leaving. If I'm trying to work for money, my job is to get the most money possible because what do I value? My time. Now you can be somewhere where you're not making a lot of money, for example, but you're actually happy and the, and the value of great stuff. But there was someone that I knew a long time ago. This girl, she was working a job after getting a bachelor's degree and spending a ton of money, like over $100,000 on it. She was working a job making 10 bucks an hour. And I was like, leave the company. She was like, I love it here. I'm like, your apartment has no furniture, right? So you can't just be like, I love it here. I'm loyal. No, you got to lose that mentality because if these people find somebody else that's better, or for example, things get tough in the company, they're going to cut you, right? They're going to be like, you're fired. I'm sorry. Laid off. All right. That's what they're going to do. I'm just being honest to banks, right? I'm loyal to Chase, to Wells Fargo to all these big banks, right? Now, what are they giving me on my money, right? For my loyalty, they give me 0.01% and they're charging me fees and it's complicated when I'm calling in and it's always a problem. The answer is no, I'm not gonna give you my loyalty. And by the way, I'm not gonna give any bank my loyalty because guess what? It's not a loyalty transaction we're not friends. You're using my money to lend it out and to make more money. And I'm using you to keep my money safe. You gotta call it what it is. There are nice people that work at the bank but guess what? Those people are not the bank and they're not going to pay my bills, right? So one big thing is when I'm looking to get the highest yield, I'm looking at the best banks that are FDIC insured. And right now my favorite bank is Discover. I love Discover. If Discover tomorrow changes or tries to do something crazy, I'm out. I'm going somewhere else. But for now, Discover is great. Customer service is amazing. They have great yields, great products. And when I call in, it's never an issue. It's Tommy, what's up? What can we do for you? And to me, that means a lot. That means a lot to me. Thirdly and lastly, there were a lot of small things that I was basically giving my loyalty to. For example, T-Mobile or the grocery store I go to or at least little places or whatever. And I was like, no, I'm, I'm going to shop around for the best prices and get the best deal for me. And that's what I started doing. And guess what? That started to save me a lot of money. Now, you might be wondering, Tommy, what is the outcome of all this stuff? You know, selling things that you identify with, selling your loyalty, and la I think the second one was basically um, some of the things that basically consume your time, right? What What's the big benefit? In the end, you become someone who has extreme value towards his time and is goal orientated. And, you know, you're just better off overall. And you get to be financially free a lot faster because you have nothing holding you in bondage. You have no aspirations of, I want to have this billion dollar house because somebody else implanted that thought into me. You're wondering, what's the nicest house I can basically get for the lowest price to pay it off faster and just have shelter? The best car, the cheapest car I can pay for in cash, you just have it and travel around. And when it comes to loyalty, guys, there are people that I'm extremely loyal to. And guess what? These people are defective just like I am. And when they make mistakes, guess what? I forgive them. When I make mistakes, they forgive me. Loyalty is not this thing where it's like, I have a friend, he did something wrong, you're done, betrayed my loyalty. No, like, I'm going to make mistakes, they're going to make mistakes. But obviously, this loyalty thing is more towards companies. You don't want to be loyal to companies. That's my advice. Thanks for watching, though. I hope this actually helps you. And let me know, okay? Answer those questions. So, the last question is, um, is your loyalty costing you money, right? And if it is, why are you still with that company just let me know in the comments down below. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel and peace.